So, today we're continuing some work here on the Subaru. Very recently, we've removed the engine, rebuilt it, installing brand new head gaskets, which is obviously a very well-known fault for these vehicles, reinstalled the engine, and the vehicle has been running very, very well until yesterday. And now I have a trouble code for a misfire, in my case for cylinder one. Now within 10 minutes, I have already diagnosed what's going on here. So let me bring you in for a close-up, show you precisely and how you can do this on your own with pretty much no tools. I used one, which I'll show you in a moment, but really you can do this with pretty much no tools whatsoever and, you know, save some money just doing the work yourself. Now chances are you've done some research and you know that P301 or 302, etc. deals with a misfire code. So how can you diagnose precisely what's going on? Well, first of all, what cylinder are we looking at? So 301 deals with the passenger side. Now, how do I know that? Well, on the boxer engine, cylinders one and three is the passenger side, cylinders two and four is the driver's side. But not even that, take a look at the spark plug wire, and they're numbered. So this leads to cylinder one, this leads to cylinder number three, and of course, on the opposite end, we have two and four. So for example, if you have a trouble code for P302, that deals with cylinder number two. 303 is cylinder number three. 304 is cylinder number four. Okay, so that's it. So what I'm going to do is start the vehicle. Now let me show you precisely what I'm going to do here. Let me make sure I have a light on. So in my case, again, I have P301, so that's cylinder number one. Follow the wire. Very, very tight working room here in the Subaru, but again, you can do this, certainly. And if you follow the wire, just want to make sure I can get this on camera, right there is the end of the spark plug wire. And what you want to do as the vehicle is running, just pull it off, pull it back, like so, okay? So that's on, that's off. And you should hear a decrease in the RPMs. Now if you hear a decrease in the RPMs, and I'll go through the other cylinders as well so you can hear the difference. If you hear a decrease in the RPMs and the car is going to shake a little and shudder, that means the cylinder is firing correctly. But if you pull this wire, nothing is going on. There's no change in the RPMs. Then either you have a problem with, most likely, it could be the wire, it could be the coil, or it could be the fuel injector. It could be the spark plug. So there's a couple things, but let me just show you very quickly on how you can do this. So here we go. I'm just going to pull the wire. And there's no change. No change whatsoever. But watch, if I pull cylinder number three, you hear the difference and you can see the camera shaking. Now it's plugged back in, plugged out, plugged back in. So this is what you want to do and verify you have a problem with that cylinder. So that verifies what the computer is telling us. So now the next step is to verify if the injectors are firing, the fuel injectors. So taking a look again, look straight down and you'll see this is the injector for cylinder number three, just to give you another view. Cylinder number three injector, this is number one. Okay, if you have P302, that's cylinder number two, the injector is right here, as you can see. Cylinder number four is right there. So what I'm going to do, you can actually purchase a mechanic stethoscope. And as the vehicle is running, you can hear if the injector is firing. You can even do an ohms test. I've done that in the past. I'll include a link on how you can quickly do that. But you have to, as you can see, it's just it, the working room here is very, very tight. And to test the injector, with a multimeter, you have to remove this plate. So all I'm going to do is start the vehicle again. I'm going to place the tip of a screwdriver on that injector and place my ear on the end of the screwdriver. And as the vehicle is running, you should hear click, 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 click. And that tells you that the injector is firing. So once again, before it gets a little too noisy here, I'm just placing the tip of the screwdriver on the injector and then placing my ear on the screwdriver. And again, you want to hear click, 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 click. That's what you want to listen for. As a comparison, you can do it, you can do this test with a good firing injector. 
and just if you're not sure what to listen for but you want to hear a clicking noise I'll try to get it on camera for you okay so here we go tip of the screwdriver on the injector and I can clearly hear clicking noise let me bring you in hopefully you can get this Okay, right on the injector. Now in my case, the injector is working perfectly fine. We do not have an issue regarding that. In your case, if the injector is not firing or you're not too sure if it's working correctly, just give me a moment in a minute or so. I'm going to clean all of this up and I'll show you on how you can get access to the injector. So just hold on for a moment. But in my case, the injector is working and I'm not getting spark to the spark plug. So I want to check the spark plug wire. So I'm going to remove the wire and place it on the bench. Now to get better access to this spark plug wire, I'm going to clean all of this. In other words, remove the air box assembly. It's easier for you to see. It's also easier for me to work on the vehicle. And then the other thing, once this is resolved, I have a uh, fuse that keeps blowing, and I'll have a separate video shortly for that. I still have to track it down. I don't know why the fuse keeps blowing on me. It's an interior fuse, but uh, that will come shortly. Okay. Now we have a lot more working, working room here. So now I'm just pulling out the spark plug wire. And before I remove this very quickly, there's something else you can do, by the way. If you have an extra spark plug, you keep the spark plug that's in the vehicle. Don't remove it. But if you have an extra spark plug, just insert it in the, in the uh, spark plug wire. Here, click. There you go. Start the vehicle and have it grounded. So in other words, that's the nice thing with these older Subarus. The intake here is metal. On the newer ones, they're plastic. So if you have a newer Subaru, you need to ground the spark plug. But as you crank the vehicle, you'll should see, you should see some sparks on the end of the spark plug. And that tells you the wire is good and that the, the ignition coil is good. But if you don't see anything going on here, then you have a problem. But I'm not even going to bother with that. And this is, for me, this is simpler, just removing the plug from the vehicle. Now, if you're familiar with my videos, you know I try to keep things as simple and straightforward as possible and that I love using the multimeter because for this $20 tool, you can do unlimited tests on your vehicle and save you a bundle. This, again, is $20 off Amazon. I'll have links in the description box below. But very simply, I want to see the condition or measure the condition of this wire. A good wire should be between the shorter the wire the lower the ohm. So in other words, if you look at the multimeter, you have a number of different settings, but you want the omega symbol. Okay? And a good wire, in our case, should be around 12 to 15 ohms approximately. If you're testing a longer wire, then you want to see around 20 ohms. But I want to see if we have a reading. So again, I'm on the ohm setting. I have a red and a black wire that comes with the multimeter. All that I'm doing I tend to use these alligator clips. You don't have to. It just makes it easy to hold everything in place. But I'm just placing one lead on one end of the ignition wire, spark plug wire. And then inside here, you can see some metal. Place the other lead in here. And I'm not getting a reading here whatsoever. It's zero. Nothing is happening here. Now let's compare that with a brand new wire a brand new ignition wire which I've already purchased and it really is this simple to test these okay same thing one end goes here so I'm still hooked up other end goes here and now we have a reading of around five ohms and again when it comes to reading ohms the other variable is the temperature so right now it's a little chilly out it's around 45 degrees so that's why I have a low rating. But you want to be in the ballpark of 5 to 10 ohms for these shorter wires. But at least we have a reading, and that's exactly what you want to see. 
Okay, I'm sorry about that, but that's generally what you want to see. You want to see a reading. So this old wire just is no longer good. Just needs a brand new ignition wire set. 40, 50 bucks and you're ready to go. Now let me jump back over to the vehicle just in case for those of you dealing with maybe a problem with the uh, uh, fuel injector. Now if you need to get access to the injector again you have this metal plate so we have a fastener here, here, I think there was one on the side if I remember correctly, yeah one right here and is that it? I think just three on the passenger side so I'll remove this plate just to show you on how, every, how everything is hooked up and then you can test the injector and ultimately just see exactly what's going on. And there is in fact just one more right here so right there is the injector so seven o'clock from that injector okay now look at the wire loom and follow it to the injector so again this is cylinder three this is cylinder number one I'll test number three just because it's a little bit easier for you to see there's less wiring in the way. So on the bottom, at the 6 o'clock position, there's a tab. Just press down the tab, pull back on the body. And then, if you look closely, you have two prongs in there. Again, going to the multimeter, we're going to take a reading, and we should see resistance. If you do not see resistance, then the injector is bad. Sometimes it may just be really, really high as well. I have to dig up what you should see in terms of uh, what's average. But nonetheless, let me just show you on how you can do this. So again, I'll come in for a different shot in a moment. But again, I'm just taking these alligator clips. Whoops, I don't want to knock over the camera. I'm just going directly to the prong. So just to give you another vantage point right there. Now let's hook up the multimeter. Again, once I upload this video, I'll look up what the average reading should be, probably 15 ohms, that's my guess. But again, you just want to make sure that these are working correctly. Super easy, as you can see, super, super easy. Okay, so we're at 15.6 ohms, okay? So that verifies that the injector's working. So just do this exact same test on your vehicle and if you do not see a reading here or the reading is just incredibly incredibly high then you need to replace the injector now if you need to replace an injector how do you do that well the first thing is the fuel system is under very very high pressure and you need to release that pressure because if you just remove the injector you'll have fuel spray everywhere so right here at least on this Subaru take a look at the fuse box and rotate this on the bottom, you'll find a 15 amp for the fuel pump. So you pull this fuse, crank the engine, and if you need a guide, this is something I did on the uh, whoops on the engine removal video. First few minutes, I show this, and uh, once the engine dies, the pressure has been relieved. Once you've done that, come over to the injector, and you have two fasteners. A little hard to see here, but right there. You have one on the right, one on the left, and then you can pull this up and get access to the injectors. Just make sure you have new O-rings, reinstall everything. I'm sure I imagine there's a YouTube video on how to replace Subaru injectors anyway, but that's how you do it. So let me replace the wires. We will start the vehicle back up, and uh, we'll be in good shape. And if you are replacing the wires, just place just a little bit of dielectric grease, as you can see, on both ends. It will make it easier to remove the wires in the future. So we have the ignition wires reinstalled and before we start the vehicle I just want to mention one thing uh, that I overlooked. When you test the ignition wires if they are in good shape but you're not getting spark to the spark plug obviously check the spark plug itself and I have a separate video showing on how to replace spark plugs on a Subaru. I'll include that link in the description box below. If the spark plugs are good, then check the coil itself. And this you can test as well with the multimeter. You just grab, it's just an ohms test like we've been doing. Take one lead, insert, remove the spark plug wire and insert it inside the coil. And then take the other lead and insert it on the opposite end. So for example, this is 
cylinder number one. This is cylinder, cylinder number two. And when you insert both leads, you should see roughly 11 ohms. Do the same thing for cylinder three and cylinder four, 11 ohms. If you don't see a reading, the coil is bad. If the coil is good, then uh, you're, you have a mechanical problem. But that's pretty rare. Chances are if you have a misfire code, it's the spark plug, the spark plug wire, the coil, or the fuel injectors. I forgot to hit record there, but as you can see, the car is running well, and we're all done.